Mathematics is such a beautiful thing. It is a broad subject which covers almost all fields of study. And unlike most languages used for communication, it is a universal one. Now, if you consider the equation of v is equal to delta x over delta t, for example, it states that the speed of an object is described by its change in position over time. E is equal to mc squared states that an object with mass m moving at the speed of light c will be transformed or more technically viewed as energy. Yet, even with the beauty in mathematics, paradoxes do exist for it. A paradox is something that seems logically true, but a further exploration of it makes it seem self-contradictory, or even wrong. Do these paradoxes arise from mathematics not being well defined, or is there more to it? In this video, I would like to explore some mathematical paradoxes. Consider an athlete running a race. He completes the race which covers 100 meters in just 10 seconds. For the athlete to complete the race, there is various stages of the race that he has to complete. Now let's assume the following. For him to complete the race, he first has to cover half of the 100 meters, that is 50 meters. Once this is done, the athlete has now to cover half of the remaining half, that is 25 meters. Furthermore, the athlete now has to cover half of this new half, that is 12.5 meters. And we carry on like this, where the athlete has to continue completing half of every half. Then this is what you observe. The athlete will always have a little bit of race to complete. There will always be a piece of road left in front of him, even though it becomes really, really small. This is a paradox, as we know the athlete completed the race. He did it in 10 seconds. Now, even though the pieces he covers do become so small, he still covers only 100 meters. And we prove this by summing all the parts. 50 meters plus 25 meters plus 12.5 meters and so forth. So when we're adding these halves of every half together, all of this is just represented by the equation as shown here. And when you solve it, the series converges to 100 meters, proving that the athlete just ran 100 meters, even though it doesn't seem like it did. Okay, so let's consider a, another paradox, which is represented as the following equation. 1 minus 2 plus 3 minus 4 plus 5 minus 6 plus 7 minus 8 and so forth. So you can see the pattern that's forming there. And the solution to this seems very logical, right? I mean, it, if you take the first and the second term and you, you add them together, that's negative 1. The third and fourth term together, that's negative 1. And you continue like this, you just get infinitely many negative one values are being added together so the value of the whole equation should be negative infinity right but look what's what happens when you decide to do the summation slightly differently and uh, if you represent it in this way we you don't do anything with the first term you only focus on the second and third fourth fifth sixth and seventh term um, then you end up getting one plus one plus one plus one and so forth and that will diverge it will become positive infinity. So we get two different values here for this equation. But we can take it even further now. So if we represent the equation in this form, if we just change the terms around a little bit, you would see that this actually uh, ends up becoming 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0. The fact is the equation cannot be solved um, and that is the interesting part to look at. Okay, so let us consider a big black box. And for this big black box, it is empty. And the only time we can, uh, we're can allowed to put objects inside of it is if that object that we want to put in doesn't have a copy of itself inside of it. So for example, if we consider a red box, um, if it doesn't have another red box inside of it, then we can put the red box inside of the black box. We can move on to a different color now, let's say green. If there's not another copy of the green box inside of itself, then we can put that green box inside of this big black box and we can continue with all the different boxes of different colors whatever we want to do so let's now consider a copy of the big black box instead and we have to determine if we can put the big black box with all of its things inside of this original big black box so the question comes up is there another big black box inside of this copy if we say no then yeah, the, that big black box and all of its content should be put inside of the big black box, the original one. But the problem of that is that it, now the big black box, the original one, is not obeying its very own fundamental rule. 
You see, it only allows objects which don't have copies of itself to be placed in it. So here it has a copy of itself in itself. So that's not allowed. And even if we consider that the original big black box that we started with did have a big box inside of it, so we're not going to put it in the original one, it's still not obeying the rule because the problem then is that this second one we're considering, it has a copy of itself in itself. So all the rules still apply for them. And this is just a very simplified way to explain Ross's paradox. Okay, finally, let us consider a box and this box, it is a normal cube and if you, cons if you look at the top part of the box, the, let's say the roof of the, of the cube, we can pick any two points there. So let's say we pick positions, the, the following two positions. Now the box has dimensions of one meter by one meter by one meter. And these two dots, they are located at position 0.1 meters and 0.3 meters from the origin. And when we focus on these two points, we can see that there should be a point in between them, namely 0.2 meters is in between them. But you can also see from 0.1 and 0.2 meters, there should be a point between them, 0.15 meters namely. And we can continue on like this and you should end up seeing that there are infinitely a um, number of points between 0.1 and 0.3 meters. So now that has been mentioned, let us do the following. Let us cut a slice off of the box, just a normal size, a slice, which is very, very small, infinitesimally small and we slice every piece off from the whole box until there's nothing left just a bunch of slices that has been made up of and when you do this you'll see that each of these slices they still have dimension of one meter by one meter they don't have height anymore so the area should be one times one which is equal to one meter squared that's fine that's for a slice but for the whole box you have to add all these slices together so that would be one plus one plus one plus one infinitely many number of times. So it's funny because we started here with a finite volume of one meter cubed and we end up getting an infinitely large area for this cube. So many more paradoxes exist out there and some of them can really blow your mind. And I invite you to share some of your favorite paradoxes or ones that have blown your mind or ones that are just really interesting to you. Share them in the comment section. Uh, remember to like this video if you liked it, subscribe to our YouTube channel and yeah, be part of this community. Mathematics is such a beautiful thing, even when it seems confusing and paradoxical.